Hi guys, welcome! In this video, we'll dive into Sarah Aileen's AoE DPS build for PvE. Sarah Aileen has the capability to deal massive amounts of fire, dark, and ghost AoE magic damage to her enemies, which is essential for clearing instances. If you missed our previous discussion regarding Sarah Aileen's skill mechanics and an analysis of her pros and cons, you can find the video link below. This time, we'll cover everything you need to know from stats, runes, gears, cards, upgrades, and battle setup to guide you in optimizing your Sarah character in PvE. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. First, for attribute point distribution, ensure first that you have sufficient points on decks to reduce the 5 second variable cast time of everything follows and butterfly ripple. Then max out int to boost magic attack which serves as a foundation for increasing magic damage. After that, allot high points on luck to increase the damage of everything follows, wherein every 3 luck increases everything follows damage by 1%. In addition, if equipped with one of these items that grants spell crit chance, then every 6 luck would boost your spell crit damage by 1% or 1.1% if you have the Kamora card deposited in the handbook. Personally, I aim for around 40% spell crit chance for a good trade-off. As for the remaining attribute points, just allocate it on a bit for survivability. You may also tweak your stat distribution based on the cards and gears that you plan on using. As an example, if you intend to inlay a Zenubi card in your garment, then it's more beneficial to add extra points on strength and dex for increasing skill damage. As for damage modifiers, these are the ones that can further boost Sarah Alien's damage output against monsters. Take note that under Wish Ode State, Sarah can completely ignore the magic defense of enemies. However, this buff only lasts for 20 seconds, with a fixed cooldown of 28 seconds, and you can only rely on the 35% chance of it not entering cooldown when using Ghost Talisman. Thus, to maximize Sarah's overall damage during long fights, you must prepare two builds in Ymir's notebook, one with less ignore mdef for when Wish Ode is active, and another one with at least 200% ignore mdef for when Wish Ode is on cooldown. Up next, let's take a look at Sarah Aileen's runes. Maxing out the core passive to level 7 should be your topmost priority as it grants all special effects of Wish Ode to herself. It also boosts her fire damage by 70% and skill damage by 35% when using Fire Talisman. Aside from activating the second line effect of her runes, you should also focus on getting a high first line value on these three essential runes. First is the Star Rune for Frostfire Green Maple, which directly boosts its damage by up to 50%. Second is a star rune for Celestial Resonance, which increases the duration of the damage ticks created by fire-related reaction effects from 5 seconds to up to 10 seconds. And third is S rune for Everything Follows, which grants an HP shield for herself to help with survivability. It's of lower priority to aim for a high first line value on her other three runes. For attribute runes, prioritize leveling up the following for improving damage. And for the arcane runes, I recommend getting both transmission rune and white blade rune for boosting your final damage whether you are near or far from the target. This because there are instances that it's impossible to maintain the 6 meter activation condition for transmission rune. As for the last slot, I prefer placing a spirit rune to prevent running out of SP during long fights. Up next is dive into the recommended equipment set and cards. First for weapon, Unlimited would be the best in slot as it gives a massive boost in magic AoE damage which directly improves the damage of Frostfire Green Maple and Tree Sources Return. Your weapon should be enchanted with magic 4 and inlaid with any of the following cards. Personally, I prefer combining one spell crit card like Kamora card or Shal Chapet star card with one damage increasing card like Drake star card or Minora star card. But if you're having problem with survivability, then just switch to Seed of Ecosil card for its spell vamp effect. For offhand, just choose any of these three options as main equipment depending on the stat you're lacking, with some totem for boosting magic damage, other shore web for boosting magic attack and M pen, or devil skull for boosting ignore M death. As for Phantom Offhand, you may either use a Peak Platter for increasing damage and reducing cast time, or Creeper Agreement if lacking ignore M death. Your offhand should be enchanted with Insight 4 and inlaid with any of the following cards. For armor, the top options for main equipment are Wisdom Sacrificial Garb for increasing magic damage and elemental damage, Gym Eater's Disguise for increasing ignore M death and fire damage, or Horror Bones Battle Gear for increasing magic attack and damage to large size. As for Phantom Armor, you may either use a Star Shatter Scout for additional magic damage modifiers, 
or the Chosen's Gown for additional damage to large size. Your armor should be enchanted with Magic 4 and inlaid with any of the following cards. For Garment, the universal choice for Magic Skill Damage Dealers is Classic Robe with 12% Skill Damage as Main Equipment and Divine Feather Clothes as Phantom Equipment. Your Garment should be enchanted with Arcane 4 inlaid with Butterfly Metamorphosis card for increasing your damage to large size monsters. You may also use the Devil's Squid card during Wish Oath's 8 second downtime to be able to cast Stealth and still benefit from her hiding related passive. For footgear, the options for main equipment are Orderly Ankle Boots with 6% MPEN or Glorious Wire Boots with 6% Magic Damage. While for Phantom Equipment, you may either use the White Gem Boots or St. Mary's Cloth Shoes. Your food gear should be enchanted with Arcane 4 and inlaid with Swordsman Senya MVP card for improving damage or Moonlight Flower Star card to be able to move freely while under Wish Ode hiding state. For accessories, the best slot for increasing fire damage are Essence of Scorching Flame with 12% fire damage as main equipment and Flame Feather as phantom equipment. All accessories should be enchanted with Anti-Mage 4 and inlaid with Devil Governor card for increasing final damage and Witch of Calamity card for additional spell crit chance. For headwear, these are my top picks for each slot. Just choose depending on availability and the stat you're lacking. As for headwear enchantment, aim for a keen fourth enchant on your tail item and inside fourth enchant on your face and back items. And for headwear card, you may use any of the following for enhancing damage. Up next, here are the other upgrades that you can invest in to further boost your damage. For Acer Monument, activating all the nodes will grant the following stats. Notably, it provides 12% fire, dark, and ghost damage, 10% damage to large and medium size, and 10% MPEN, M damage, and magic attack. For guild buffs, maxing out your blessings and prayers will grant additional raw magic attack, ignore M def, M pen, and fire, dark, and ghost damage. For Oracle Mirror Extract, the top options are Build the Sarn for damage to MVP, Stick of Wicked Thought for MPEN, Oath Book Page 2 for magic attack, or Fire Axe for fire damage. For Ancient Relics, you may focus on increasing damage using Lord of Vain or Era of Fire Seed. You may also opt to improve survivability using Horn of the Unyielding. For multi-job, you can unlock the following classes to get more int, luck, and dex. And for Adventure Handbook, just focus on collecting items and achievements that grant magic attack when unlocked or deposited. Finally, let's take a look at some tips for using Sarah Aileen in battle. First, prepare dual builds in your Emir's Notebook. Your primary build should have low ignore MDEF for when Wish Ode is active, while your secondary build should have at least 200% ignore MDEF for when Wish Ode is on cooldown. Then, place the following skills on the manual and auto skill bars. I prefer placing Frostfire Green Maple on auto as manual casting works better with her offensive skills. Once you're all set up, use the following consumables that can boost your damage such as Mill Bees, Food Buffs, and Fire Alloy. Before initiating combat, activate the Ghost Talisman first, then buff yourself with Wish Ode before switching to Fire Talisman. This buff rotation gives you a 35% chance to avoid Wish Ode's cooldown. If the cooldown reset is successful, then you can stick to your primary build and repeat this buff rotation every 20 seconds. But if the cooldown reset fails, then you need to switch to your secondary build once Wish Ode expires. After that, you can start engaging the boss by casting Impermanence to gain a shield that absorbs damage. Whenever the shield disappears, quickly recast Impermanence or everything follows to maintain it. After that, you can turn on Auto Battle to spam Frostfire Green Maple. From time to time, you can manually cast 3 sources return for a larger area of effect damage. If you find it difficult to survive long under Fire Talisman, even with Seed of Egrisil card, you can switch to Dark Talisman for a 63% chance to dodge damage. Lastly, during the 8 second window when Wish Ode is on cooldown, you have the option to use a Devil Squid card to be able to cast the Stealth skill. This will allow you to continuously benefit from her Hide and Conceal and Flame Heart Guardian passive skills.
And there you have it, my Sarah Aileen DPS build guide for PvE. Overall, I believe this new hero class can outdamage other magic classes in PvE when built properly. Be sure to leave a comment below if you have any questions or suggestions. Alright, that's it for this video guys. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love for you to consider subscribing by hitting the red subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see you in our next episode.